It was an interesting offseason to say the least for Philadelphia, starting with the bizarre story of the Twitter scandal that led to Brian Colangelo's <laughs> resignation. Elton Brand was named the GM late in the summer. But in terms of the roster, a couple of significant losses. Marco Bellinelli, Ursan Ilyasova, who they picked up for nothing back in March and were contributors down the stretch and into the postseason, both walked away during the summer via free agency. Did this team do enough to improve itself over the offseason? Well, I think uh, Embiid's health, uh, being able to play a full season, uh, I think bringing in uh, Wilson Chandler and, and bringing back and in Markel Fultz. Uh, I think, you know, when you look at Philly, they have four great athletes. Now, can those great athletes continue to progress into being great players? And I think with Embiid and also Simmons, they have the ability as a one-two punch to truly dominate the East at both of their positions. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if they've done enough to improve as much as I'd like to have seen them. Just because, to me, they have great shooting. They have, you know, Embiid's such a talented, young, big man. I love Simmons' game. You know, Fultz, I don't, I'm not sure about Fultz yet. i got to see him play some. But they need some more playmakers on the perimeter. I, I saw them play last year against Boston in the conference semis, and they couldn't get, you know, Sharge couldn't get off on the perimeter. Right. J.J. Reddick couldn't go by people. Um, none, none of their wing guys were able to put the ball on the floor and attack and make plays. I think that's the next thing for Philadelphia, getting, getting some wing guys that can go out there and put the ball on the floor and attack. And, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a huge part of today's game is beating your man off the dribble, drawing, and kicking because the court's so spread. They didn't improve enough in that area for me, but I love Embiid. I think he'll be the best big guy in the league. You mentioned Wilson Chandler, who they picked up essentially for cash in the offseason from Denver. Uh, what will they need from him coming off the bench? Well, I, I like his toughness that he'll bring to the team. He's a defensive stopper. Uh, he can rebound the basketball. And when you talk about a slasher who can get to the basket, you know, he can do that and he can also knock down the three. He's also been in the league for a while, so he's got, you know, experience. Uh, he knows how to defend some of the top offensive players in the league, and he'll take the challenge. I believe coming back to the East uh, from the West, uh, he understands how basketball is played in the East because it's a little different than the way they play it in the West. But I think he'll be a good addition for this Philadelphia team. I do too. He can guard in multiple multiple positions. I mean, he's a guy they can switch. So I really like him. I think that was a big addition to them. And you saw, I just saw in the little clips there, his ability to put the ball on the floor and finish. So he's going to be a nice addition. I, I'm just skeptical of some of their perimeter guys making yeah. enough plays for each other. You know, not Covington's uh, strong point. He's a shooter. Yeah. Still have the big fella, uh, Joel Embiid, coming off an all-star season last year. We kind of got past the limits in terms of games and minutes. He played some back-to-backs. Assuming you get a full season out of him, what are we looking at? Oof. You're looking at that guy putting up big numbers. He's an unbelievable talent. Last year in the playoffs, he, he averaged like 37 minutes a game. So he played a lot of, yeah. a lot of uh, minutes in that game. He's got a great touch. He's got a great feel. He can make a little jump hooks. He's got the ability to shoot the three. I really like him. I, I just think he's like a... He's got so much potential yet to grow, and he's still so good right now. And he's got the mindset I like. He's not afraid to challenge people. He's like, hey, I can't wait to play against this guy. And, oh, this guy might have got the better of me, but, man, next time I'm kicking his tail. I, I, I think that gets your team fired up. When, you, when your best player is, like, not afraid to take challenges and uh, go out there and attack some of the best big men in the league and challenge them, I, I like it. I just, I just think it's all positive for Joel Embiid. I just want him to stay healthy you know, for this year and for his career. He's had plenty of injuries to go around so far in his young career. No shortage of confidence, obviously, but he, like the rest of the Sixers, uh, had his, his warts exposed a little bit during that playoff series with Boston in particular. What would you like to see in terms of improvement out of him, B? Um, continue to intimidate and dominate. Uh, most bigs right now, um, they don't come to the game with the purpose of dominating the opponent. And I think Embiid has that mentality where he wants to dominate the opponent. Now can he learn to use his intimidation? And how do, how do you intimidate? You intimidate with your words, as we know he can do, right? 
and then you intimidate with your play. His words are psycholog they have psychological impact, right? Like, you know, Mikhail, Bird, you know, Paris, their words out on the floor, they carried psychological impact. Uh, when Mikhail was torching us for 63, right? <laughs> you know, he, he was saying, he was saying, y'all better put somebody else on me, right? <laughs> so the psychological impact of your word in the word game, right? Embiid has, has mastered the word game of intimidation with his words. Now can he back it up with physical play? And when you can intimidate and dominate, now you have a chance to win, and I think that's what he, where he, the path that he's headed on. That doesn't sound like you at all, by the way. No, I never did that. Uh, but I will. Uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to talk a lot out there. But, you know, the thing I like about Joel Embiid that he can, in an area he can really improve on, is his defensive shot blocking. His ability to move from the free throw line down and block a shot from the other side of the lane coming over. He's got such quick feet and quick hops, and he's got great anticipation. I saw him in that Miami series last year in the playoffs when they put him in the game. Defensively wise, their team changed completely. He, they right. had a rim protector. There's not a lot of rim protectors yeah. in this league left anymore. Against the Celtics, I thought he got too complacent of staying on the perimeter. He's still got to get back. You got to do both. You got to protect the rim and fire out, yep. try to get a hand up on you know the shooter that you're guarding and stuff. But his defense can improve. And that, boy, you put him as one of the top defensive centers in the league, also blocking shots and rebounding, mm -hmm. ooh, he's a handful. Well, another big story heading into the season for Philly is the suspect shooting of a pair of number one overall picks, Ben Simmons and Markel Fultz. Recently, the Players' Tribune released video of Fultz looking healthy and hitting some jumpers. Uh, both players talked about the upcoming season and working on those shots. I'm normal, you know, I'm back to being myself, I'm back to who I am. Of course, uh, shot-wise, I mean, it's not 100%, I don't think anybody shots 100%, but I, I'm just putting in the work every day, you know, and that's all I can ask for. And I, I'm confident enough and, and I feel uh, like I, I have what I need to, you know, to help this team in the ways I want to help them. This summer was great for me, just putting up shots. You know, I've never yeah. been on a team where I needed to put shots up. Honestly, I've never needed to shoot. I never had somebody teach me to shoot. So it's like there's something I'm new at. So I have all these people saying I can't do this. It's like obviously I can't because I never practiced it. Uh, so this is really the first summer where I've had time to practice and, and you know, work on my shot. Uh, which give me a lot of confidence. I'm the type of person, you know, you teach me one thing, I kind of pick it up pretty quickly. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to come this year and hitting, hitting threes, shooting threes, because that's not my game. Uh, but I'll take a lot more jumpers. Um, I feel very comfortable taking, you know, po uh, elbow shots, mid-range shots. Uh, I'm not worried about that part of it. Um, it's more the fact just taking them. Um, and I know I'm not going to hit every shot. You know, I might go for six jumpers in one game. But uh, it's more of the mental side of it. It is fascinating to me that Ben Simmons says he's basically never practiced shooting before as the number one overall pick and a professional basketball player. Um, <laughs> but he's not a good shooter. Uh, he, he only took 11 threes. He at least understands where his range lies. But he also hit 56% from the free throw line, which is a little disturbing as well. Um, what kind of improvement can he make as a shooter? Um. I, I watched Magic Johnson improve greatly as a shooter. And, you know, we compare, you know, Simmons and, 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 and Johnson, you know, a lot because of their ability to handle the basketball, size, and yeah. everything else. When Magic first came into the NBA, he was not known as a great shooter. No, right. But what Magic did is he understood how he could score points, right? What Magic did is he became a 90% foul shooter. And if Simmons wants to score more points, right, he's got to become a better foul shooter. Once you become a better foul shooter, as Magic did, then you can move it back out to 18 feet, 20, 20 feet, 22, so forth and so on, and you shoot the same foul shot, which is what Magic did. Now, can Simmons do that? First, he's got to become a better foul shooter. Mm -hmm. Then I think he can become a better jump shooter. In, in foul shooting, I saw them play the Celtics in the playoffs last year where Ben Simmons didn't want the ball late right. in that game because they were going to foul. And you could see Ben was like, man, somebody else better shoot these free throws. you got to have enough confidence. And, you, and it takes work. I'm, I'm shocked to hear a guy say, I haven't worked on my shooting. That means you've never been in the gym by yourself. Like I always say, when you're in the gym by yourself, you shoot, chase the ball, you shoot for hours. But like, what do you, would you go to the gym by himself and just sit on the ball? Like, what do you, I, I'm shocked when I hear people say they haven't worked on their shooting. Yeah. He's, he has 
kind of funky form on his shot. Yeah. But I think he can get, you know, Magic, you talk about Magic. Remember Magic just got that push yeah. shot. He yeah. did everything changed. He, everything got really tight. He just started making that little push shot. Uh, Simmons needs to tighten up his shot. There's just too many moving parts. His elbows are out and stuff. But I think if he can just get a nice, solid, easy stroke that he can repeat, he can make enough shots to keep you know to keep you on him. But his ability is to drive and find people. His right. vision is tremendous. He's got great size. I don't think he'll ever be a great shooter. But can he just become an adequate shooter? You know. That's a and good then, question. Then we talk about yeah. Fultz. <laughs> I just saw that film. Ay ay ay. Well, <laughs> what a force. That's a bad-looking jumper to me, okay? I'm just telling you what. <laughs> and yet, it's better than the video we saw of him last year when what? he was recovering hey. from the shoulder injury. That bizarre video. Frankly, I think the 76ers didn't do him any favors no. by allowing the media yeah. in the room to see that. That his it was jumper forced last and uncomfortable year. and weird. His jumper last year looked like Chuck's golf swing. He had about <laughs> 17 different stops in the thing. You can't shoot like that. Right. Even this forced yeah. jumper that he's shooting right now. I'm watching him play. When guys. It's such a flow to your shot. It's just, it's just a, a smoothness to your stroke. He looks just forced. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping for the kid, I'm hoping Fultz is able to make those shots because one thing he can do, he can put the ball in the hole, he can get to the rim yeah. and do stuff. But you're not going to be able to go by anybody if you can't make a jump. Right. So I, I, I was watching that. I was really interested in seeing it. It's the first time I've seen his, you know, new shot. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, that's the reaction. Yeah. Well, and he was under such a microscope last year as well. The, they had the shoulder injury. A lot of people speculated he had the yips as a shooter. Yes. And now he knows the entire world is watching him every time he launches a shot. Yeah, and, 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 and as you say, the entire world is watching, so there's pressure, right? And then when other players know that you can't shoot or have a difficulty time shooting, then they defend you a little bit harder because now they want to say to the coach, hey, I'm shutting my guy down, yeah, right? Right. The thing that I would say watching this film, Mac, that, that shocked me was, you know, if you want to learn how to shoot, please get some NBA players to teach you how to shoot. You can't go get, you know, little guys who ain't never played in the NBA, yeah. ain't never faced defensive pressure, and, and, and that guy's going to teach you how to shoot. It's not going to happen. So the shot that I just saw, you, you warming up shooting, I don't know if you're going to be able to get that shot off. <laughs> it's, it's slow. It's a set it, shot. It, it's slow. It, it, it's, hey, yeah. it, it, it looks good, you know, when nobody's around. Yeah. But, you know, in, in practice, when people are guarding you and everything, I don't know if you're going to be able to get that shot off. And, a, and an NBA player or a former NBA player or somebody who's played around the yeah. NBA, they'll tell you, hey, man, you ain't going to be able to get that shot off. And Zeke, off. you're talking about talking on the floor. If I'm guarding him, I'm backing up 15 feet, and I'm yelling, shoot, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> and I see what that does to his confidence. <laughs>
that's a good number that you're looking for. But you're saying, okay, if I get 25 assists and I'm making 38 field goals, how do I get that, right? And that's where the numbers are deceiving. Because the numbers are deceiving because you're saying, well, did we penetrate the basketball from the post? Or did we have just pass around the right. perimeter for mm -hmm. shot? And what you just pointed out accurately is that there was no ball penetration. Mm -hmm. So those 25 assists really just came from people passing it out on the perimeter yes. and somebody jacking up a shot. And I think an area that they can ex explore more and do a good job against these smaller teams that switch everything is Dario Saric in the post. His last two games they played in that series, the only, it was only a five-game series with Boston. Right. But the last two games in that series, in his first three games, he had 27 points. The last two games, he averaged 26 games, 26 points a game, because he got the ball right here. And he went to work down here because he, he's so much bigger than the Celtics defenders. So Saric and Embiid in the post is something that Philly's going to have to look to if they can't get those you know, perimeter guys to go by. Yeah, some and of this we, could be experience, too. I mean, this was yeah. their first go-around yeah. in the postseason as, as a group. And, and, you know, Matt, you know, Kevin, we, we're taught early, right? You, you know, you defend the ball, right? And if the ball, if you want to get the ball into the paint, right, Players now are taught, well, I got to dribble into the paint. Right. No, if you want to get the ball into the paint, guess what? When you throw it into yeah. the paint, that's called ball penetration too, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> so what Philly's got to figure out is, can we penetrate the ball, right, with Embiid on the post, or do we have to rely on trying to get by people? And, Kevin, you just said they can't get by people out on the perimeter. So they have to be in the post. And also what happens, as soon as Isaiah drops it in there, everybody drops off. So yeah. all of a sudden now the entire defense loosens up so they can go. If I, if I throw the ball out here to Isaiah and he can't beat me off the dribble and I'm here on this thing, it just, he's got no vision. It's hard to play basketball with that much pressure on you. Yeah. All right, guys, last year, 52 wins. This season, more or fewer than 54 and a half. Uh, I got 56 more. 56 Yes. Not 56 more, but 56, yeah. meaning more than 54. 50 56 and a half. more would be a great year. 56. 56. Okay, 56. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking over too. I think that they're gonna, they're gonna find some rhythm with that team, and I think the you know, just Embiid's improvement and being around all the time gives them a big jump up on everybody.